Howdy doody, my name is Cameron, better known as Venus Theory, and sadly I am not a cartoon, but instead made of mortal, fleshy, squishy, meaty bits, which is unfortunate. Today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the new Walker 2 soundware from UVI. Walker 2 is a comprehensive fully footstep design library with detailed controls for everything from the type of shoe and surface to the location and even accessories of the subject. I haven't worked all that much in Foley myself, but for those of you that do, you definitely have my respect because Foley is incredibly tedious. It really is an art form to capture a realistic performance of natural sound. For this project, UVI sent me four different clips that we're going to dub with Walker 2 to add the footstep sound. So let's take a look at the first clip here. Pretty straightforward. Looks like they're walking and we can see they're in a kitchen, they're barefoot, and they're wearing sports shorts. So let's get started. In Walker, we can set up all the basics we need for the scene in only three clicks, really. So we have a human, what type of shoe, they're barefoot, what type of outfit they are wearing, sportswear, and what type of surface are they walking on. In this case, let's go with maybe linoleum. Performing sounds in Walker is really straightforward, and many aspects of the engine actually adapt automatically based on the way that you're playing, which saves a ton of time when doing this sort of stuff. To play the engine in Walker, we use the keys C, C sharp, D, D sharp, and E. C and E represent regular footsteps. C sharp and D sharp represent scuffs or slides. And D represents a stop. So we could walk, add in a scuff, and stop. Ta-da! What's nice about Walker's engine is many of the aspects of it actually adapt automatically based on the performance or the way you're playing, using things like velocity for loudness and the speed of the feet hitting the ground and lifting. Go for more of a run. And there's a lot of variance in the performance, which makes it feel really realistic without a whole ton of effort. But you can also disable this by switching off the auto mode here and adjusting the speed. or other parameters as needed, either manually or through automation. With all that set up and Walker here, let's give this first scene a go. I think that sounds pretty good, but we could maybe add a little bit more detail to make it feel more realistic. Because this person is wearing sports clothing, we can maybe assume that they have a gym bag or a backpack or something along those lines. So in the outfits, we can actually add some add-ons. So let's go here and add a backpack and see how that sounds. A Little bit heavy on that, so let's drop the volume of the backpack slightly. I think that actually sounds a lot better. Moving over into the effects tab here, let's actually add a little bit of reverb. So we'll go for a small space. This looks to be, I'm gonna assume that's a kitchen and we can go back and start adding some distance. That's way too much because this is pretty close to the camera. So let's try right about there for just a little bit of space and give that another try. Excellent, I think that does it. Moving on, let's check out what we've got here in scene two. Looks like we've got a person in tennis shoes, in jeans, on a wood floor in a slightly larger space. Let's see how quick we could do that with Walker. We've got shoes on already, maybe some thin jeans and a wooden floor. Let's try that. All right, and let's give it a shot. Not too bad. Let's add a little bit more detail though to bring the scene to life. For a little bit more detail here, let's maybe try changing out the shoes. Maybe we'll try one of the other wood surfaces. Actually sounds a bit more substantial. And maybe this person has like some keys in their pocket or something. Just for a little bit more life. And swapping over to the effects tab here, let's go to a medium room maybe something about the size of wood room. Right about there sounds pretty good. Let's bring up the keys just a touch. 
and let's see what we got. Timing was a bit shaky, but sounds good to me. Moving on to scene three. Okay, this one looks to be a bit more of a challenge. It looks like we've got big boots, some kind of weird medieval clothing. I'm thinking that's like some plate armor, and they're definitely outdoors, and they're walking on, I'm gonna guess that's dry dirt just by the color of it. So let's set that up and see what we can get. Because this scene has so many kind of different elements to it, let's work on the big details first. So let's look for some shoes. I'm gonna guess boots. Probably boots, maybe more like that. And the surface, let's go for dirt. I think that sounds pretty good. Let's see if that kind of matches up with what we're seeing here. I think that works. Let's add in a bit more detail. Because the person's wearing probably big heavy armor, let's pitch down the footsteps a little bit just to add a bit more kind of substance to them. And let's start adding on some modifiers. In this case, I think we'll go with maybe some metal. I think that sounds pretty good. Let's change the outfit. I think we're gonna go with thick leather. And in the outfit modifiers, there we go, medieval armor. Let's give that a go. Sounding pretty good. Let's add a surface modifier as well. Maybe we'll add some dirt. There we go, that sounds a lot more heavy and real. I think that's what we're after. In the effects, let's go for an exterior. This is probably, uh, oh, maybe a courtyard. I think that should be about where we wanna be. Winding back, let's give it a go. Yeah, I think that's the one. So I think we'll call that one done. Let's move on to the last scene. All right, let's give it a play. Cool, it looks like we've got outdoors, we've got some high heels, we've got a dress, and we've got asphalt or gravel or something like that. So let's do that really quick. Let's choose the shoes. These are heels, sounding good. Outfit is a dress, walking on, I think concrete, Uh, that's pretty believable. How about maybe a different type of concrete? Actually, I like that. There's a little bit more movement to it. Like there's some stuff on the surface. So that's maybe a bit more interesting. Just to bring a bit more detail to the outfit here, let's maybe try adding a buckle. Just for a little bit more motion to the footsteps and a little bit more realism. And for the dress, let's maybe add in something like small objects. Because I assume this person is carrying a you know, purse or a handbag, something like that. Let's see what the other concrete sounds like. I think that actually sounds really, really good. Okay, over in effects, we're gonna add a reverb. This is an exterior, this is a street. I think that actually sounds pretty cool. Another nice thing to know too is this can be automated. So if your subject is kind of way off in the scene and coming towards you or walking away, that's a really handy way to do that. That sounds pretty solid. Let's give this a shot. Let's see some other mics. Actually like dynamic for that one maybe. All right, okay, rolling back here. Let's give it a shot.
Excellent. Timing was a bit shaky, but I think that sounds good and that sells the scene for me. So just like that, we have now designed footstep effects for four different scenes using Walker 2. And because the UI is so straightforward, once you know where things are and what they do, it takes like no time at all to set this up. Like I probably could have done all four of those scenes in under 10 minutes. And that's a pretty powerful thing compared to having to do this in more of a traditional Foley setup. It is worth mentioning as well that Walker 2 actually goes beyond just human footsteps. Sounds. You can see here we actually have different categories. So we have human sounds, which are shoes, feet, things like that. We have animal sounds, which are things like hooves. We've got paws. We've got talons. All sorts of creepy stuff. And designed footsteps, which are some really interesting categories like crackle, fire, glass, leaves, and so on. Let's try maybe one of the fire ones. Of course, with any of these, you can also use all the modifiers so we can have design footsteps with accessories. We could still use the outfits or bypass them, all the accessories for that, all the surfaces, all the surface modifiers and everything else in between. So Walker 2 is a really versatile tool for this stuff for pretty much any type of production or scenario. So that wraps everything up for this one. Walker 2 is available now either as a permanent license or as part of UVI's Sonic Pass subscription service. It runs inside of the free UVI workstation, or you can run it inside of Falcon if you want to take this library to a whole other plane of insanity. If you want to check it out for yourself or find more details, you could do that with the link down in the description below. A very big thank you, as always, to UVI for having me on the channel. Channel. Always love doing this stuff. This was really different, and I think this was actually quite a bit of fun. So, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. And as always, I hope this inspires you to get out there and make something awesome.